So today I'm going to talk about deep learning based acoustic sensing for orthopedic application, which um, is basically my, the topic of my PhD dissertation. Um, okay, so uh, the human hearing is one of our main senses and it has incredible abilities. Um, it can direct our attention, can convey a direction in space, it can provide feedback, can trigger an immediate reaction, provide complex information in a short amount of time, and allow an effortless interpretation of acoustic signals. Um, so let me give you a, a quick example. So when you listen to this recording, you can probably uh, hear that this uh, is a person knocking on wood. And uh, if you listen to this one, you can probably hear that uh, it corresponds to a person knocking on metal, and you can probably even say that it's a thin sheet of metal because of the vibration characteristics. Um, so in medical applications, uh, acoustic signals were already used in ancient times. Uh, so Hippocrates uh, described the following in one of his works. If the patient does not expectorate, set him on a steady chair, let someone else hold him by the shoulders, you shaking, apply your ear to his sides. You're looking for a sound that is in the flank uh, as if in a wineskin. And if the pus, because of the thickness, does not fluctuate or make any sound in the chest, but the patient draws the breath rapidly, feeds well up, my cup is present, do not be deceived, but know well that this chest is full of pus. And uh, this is a technique to, um, to diagnose thoracic empimea, which uh, is, a, is a lung disease. Um, also, uh, acoustic signals have been automatically analyzed, um, uh, like, like uh, Alfredo also mentioned in his talk. Um, so one example for a diagnostic use case uh, is uh, vibroartography, where contact sensors are placed on the knee uh, during patient examination. And when patients move their legs, um, the, um, the joint sounds are analyzed um, and uh, for the diagnosis of cartilage degeneration and an intraoperative um, uh, example uh, is the needle guidance as uh, was described by Alfredo before. So this is uh, also a figure from, from one of his earlier papers. Um, so prior work has shown that acoustic signals have great potential for medical applications. Uh, we can use uh, structure-borne signals using contact microphones or digital stethoscopes, like in a needle uh, use case. We can also uh, capture room audio and analyze that. Um, acoustic signals are easy to integrate. They offer highly dense and complex information. They're highly sensitive, can be relatively low cost. They're non-invasive and radiation-free. Um, so since the early years of, of machine learning in the 1940s, uh, it has come a long way and is currently evolving with a pretty fast pace. So uh, yeah, so from the, the first mathematical formulation of uh, the model of neurons in, in 1943, through back propagation, RNNs, convolutional neural networks, to um, <clears throat> generative, um, deep learning to uh, the transformer architecture that has been proposed in 2017, which is currently um, gaining a lot of attention uh, through implementations like JetGPT or GPT-4. Um, but also in the audio domain, learning-based uh, methods have uh, evolved and, and uh, achieved really uh, astonishing results. So um, from the application of RNNs to the sequence-like nature of acoustic signals um, to spectrogram um, that were analyzed with uh, CNNs after the breakthrough of deep learning in 2012 uh, with AlexNet, which won the image design competition, to the wide adoption of uh, speech um, analysis-based assistance like Siri and Alexa, um, high-fidelity speech generation through for example, uh, the WaveNet, um, audio spectrogram transformer, audio clip, which connects images, natural language and audio, to high fidelity music, 
neural music generation like OpenAI's jukebox. So the research objective in, in our work was to identify novel ways for using acoustic signals to improve clinical decision making, design clinically feasible hardware setups that allow the translation to, to clinical applications, and develop novel deep learning based methods and reliable automated acoustic sensing solutions. So the first work that I want to showcase here um, is about error prevention in, in surgical drilling, um, which is an essential part of orthopedic surgery and used in many surgical procedures. Um, and uh, really a risk here is a drill breakthrough. That means when you um, like drill through the bone and you break through on the other side, uh, there's a risk of uh, hurting vital soft tissue structures like nerves or vessels. Um, so we designed a custom uh, contact microphone setup that uh, can um, really accurately and with high sensitivity capture structure borne acoustic signals. Um, so we, we performed a human cadaveric experiment with uh, six cadavers and 136 drill holes um, and captured the, the, the structure bond vibration signals caused by the drilling with contact microphones attached to the, to the specimen skin. I'm going to play you one of these uh, recordings. Um, where you could hear the drilling in the cortical bone and the drill breakthrough. Um, then we designed a, a method uh, that uses spectrogram features and a sliding window technique to classify the samples uh, using a convolutional neural network into um, drilling and drill breakthrough events. We use the focal loss function to uh, account for class imbalance, which is inherent to the data set because we have a lot of uh, samples from drilling, but very little from drill breakthrough events. And we could achieve um, accuracies up to 94% uh, with 100 millisecond windows. Um, if we decrease the window length to 25 seconds, which corresponds to a um, total pipeline execution uh, time of around 64 milliseconds, we can still achieve a sensitivity of around 84% for drill breakthrough detection. And we could also show that uh, we can, like while being highly accurate, we are, uh, our system is many times faster than the human reaction time. So the next project that I want to quickly showcase is about uh, femoral stem insertion and total hip arthroplasty, where first the uh, degenerate femoral head is removed, the femoral canal is prepared using rafts before the implant is inserted, connected with the artificial head and the acetabular component, which then forms the, the new artificial hip joint. And so the, the implanting of the femoral stem component that is hammered into the femur is one of the main steps in total hip arthroplasty. The insertion endpoint is defined by a target press fit, um, but it's not possible to assess this press fit using optical navigation. And a severe complication during femoral stem insertion is um, periprosthetic fracture, which you can See on this X-ray, that's actually an X-ray that was uh, captured here at Fidus University Hospital, um, where you can see that the femur is fractured around the, the implant. And um, this means uh, instead of walking out of the hospital after a few days for patients, uh, it means that they have to undergo a really extended rehabilitation and um, also associated with additional pain and uh, complications. So we attached a contact microphone to the inserter tool to analyze the, um, the hammering sounds. I will uh, show you uh, or play a short sample from the data set. And uh, we designed uh, a method that uses a spatial temporal uh, model to classify a sequence of five ha consecutive hammer blows into an increasing or a reached target press width. And the reached target press width was uh, defined as the, the preoperatively planned 
Growth sites fully seated in the anatomy confirmed by an experienced hip surgeon. Uh, we can show that we can achieve a per class recall of uh, around 94% for detecting an ongoing insertion and around 71% for identifying a reach target press fit and a uh, careful cross validation experiment by splitting on a specimen level uh, with five human cadaveric hip specimens showed that in most of the cases we can actually uh, predict the optimal insertion endpoint pretty well. Uh, the third project that I want to quickly showcase um, is about uh, viral acoustic detection of pedicle screw loosening. Um, the pedicle screws are driven into um, vertebras for spinal fusion uh, and then connected with uh, titanium rods to fuse two or more spine segments uh, together, prevent motion. Um, and a complication here is pedicle screw loosening which weakens the implant structure and allows motion again um, and results in severe back pain for patients. And in CT, it's not always uh, clear. Uh, it, it, like CT can, in, in some cases, not be the basis for a clear diagnosis uh, of, of a, or confirmation of a loosened screw, but this is the, the current clinical gold standard. So um, system that we propose uh, uses an, uh, excitation device that is placed on the um, spinous process and we send a um, sign sweep from 10 to 500 hertz that lasts 2.5 seconds into the tissue and uh, measure the resulting vibration on the screw heads um, with contact microphones and uh, here you can hear a sample how that sounds like oh, that was not too loud um, here you can see the resulting spectrogram that we then analyze with uh, a squeeze and excitation rest at 18. And um, you can show that the spectrogram can capture the vibration transmitted through the tissue to the screw head. Uh, we also uh, performed a human cadaveric experiment with four uh, spine specimens. And we could show that our, our method achieves a mean accuracy of around uh, 91%. Here you can see a more in-depth analysis of the um, cross-validation experiment. So um, to conclude, uh, acoustic signals, um, like our, our projects, our research projects uh, showed that acoustic signals have great potential for the development of novel, also multimodal sensing solutions in medicine um, to also complement uh, classical vision-based or medical imaging-based uh, techniques. Um, they can be applied to both interventional and diagnostic applications and can provide solutions for problems where conventional systems such as surgical navigation or medical imaging reach their limits. Regarding clinical applications, uh, we identified orthopedics as a promising field um, as the interactions between tools and power tools and, and drilling and sawing um, generates really distinct and um, like high amplitude um, acoustic signals, but also of course other fields uh, such as minimal invasive surgery uh, has very interesting applications already. Um, regarding, regarding the data requirements, um, the access to the relevant environment uh, is limited in the, uh, in the medical field very often. So, um, Cadaver experiments are costly, are associated with, um, with ethics and re regulations. Um, so we think that data augmentation can be an important tool. We also propose a, a, like a, a method gen uh, that's based on generative adversarial neural networks uh, for data augmentation that I couldn't cover here and within the limited amount of time. And um, also initiatives uh, for data sharing and um, like sharing patient records, but also translational uh, research centers uh, with cadaveric uh, like facilities to, to facilitate uh, human cadaveric experiments can be uh, very valuable here. Um, regarding signal acquisition, high quality um, acquisition of signals is very crucial. Um, the feature representation that were mostly used in this work um, were spectrogram features, uh, which seem to be 
um, a very suitable representation for acoustic signals for further processing. But um, yeah, nowadays also raw audio is being processed using, uh, for example, transformer-based architectures um, that can hang up, handle long sequence lengths. Finally, um, we like I believe that open source uh, is something that we should really, um, yeah, like really embrace, uh, especially for a, a field that is as small as uh, acoustic sensing for medical applications, and uh, we should really um, make our tools accessible to other researchers that they can build upon the work that we that we do. Um, yeah, that's it from my side. Um, thank you very much for the, the invitation again, and I'm happy to answer some questions maybe later.